Hey there, James here with Penner Trailer Sales. Today I'd like to do a video about hydraulic dovetails. We carry both Max D and Diamond C that offer the hydraulic dovetail. Today we're using a Diamond C. Functionally, they're very similar. They both use a cam lock mechanism. They're both an 11 foot hydraulic dovetail. Hydraulic dovetails have evolved a bit since they've came out. When they started, they were just nine feet long. Uh, today, they're 11 feet long. The nine footers hinged behind the rear axle. Uh, the 11 footers, they moved the hinge up in front of the rear axle. And then most commonly on the earlier versions with the nine footers, you'll see they had a straight push cylinder. So that was just a cylinder mounted to the frame and mounted to the dovetail and it just pushed the dovetail up or let it down and there would be a lock when you push the dovetail up, a lock that would drop in that would prevent the cylinder from coming down. In that case, you needed to be back here at the rear of the trailer to function that lock, maybe with your foot or with your hand when you took the pressure off to be able to release that. Today, both Max D and Diamond C are using a cam lock mechanism. And with a cam lock, there's no lock that needs to manually be engaged or disengaged back here. It's just functioned up front. So we'll move uh, up here to the side of the trailer where the power pack is mounted uh, in a toolbox. Here on the toolbox, both Max D and Diamond C, again, do a very similar application. They mount the power unit with the battery in the side mount toolbox here. Um, most commonly, it's nice to have a uh, wireless remote to be able to function the tail. So um, you can you have freedom of movement, of course, then in that case, but they'll also come standard with a corded remote as well. Now, with the cam lock mechanism, when you function the tail from the resting position and you go to put the tail down, the first thing you'll see is that the tail will actually come up a little bit. And that's because of the cam lock mechanism. Once it cams over in the resting position, it actually comes down a bit. And to leave that resting position, it's gonna cam past itself and the tail will come up. And we'll demonstrate that here. See, it's coming up a bit there. And we'll see it peak and kind of pauses. Then it'll head for the ground. As it gets down to the ground, you'll see the light bar or the bumper that's going to hinge up into the tail. And there you have it. The dovetails all the way to the ground. Obviously a good loading angle is very convenient, very, very good ease of use with a hydraulic dovetail. Now we'll go ahead and function it back up again. And we'll see the same action. It'll go up, it'll kind of peak and pause and you want to bring it down until it sits down. And when it comes down and rests, you also want to pressure the cylinder a bit uh, so that it's being held down and it's not able to sit there. And as you're going down the road, be loose to bounce and the bumps and the road shocks and so on. So here we're coming down and it's latched and you heard the pump kind of pressure up a little bit there. Now that's cammed over and it's held so it's not going to be able to have any loose movement as it's going down the road. Uh, from bumps and road shocks and so on. These tails are rated to carry 8,000 pounds. That's true of both Diamond C and Max D, and that's 8,000 pounds evenly spread or centered on the tail. Some manufacturers will rate these tails to lift more than carry. Max D is one of them. They rate their tails to lift 10,000 pounds, but to only carry the 8,000 pounds. The reason for that is, is because the most uh, stress that these tails see or the, the, the time of the dynamics that will break or will bend the hydraulic dovetails is carrying down the highway. Going down the highway, you're constantly seeing a lot of shock loads from potholes, from bridges, and so on. It's those shock loads that will over time bend the tail. If you try to load something too heavy, put a skid steer or something that's too heavy on this tail and try to lift it from the ground up, you're probably most likely not going to bend anything in that application. You're just going to limit the pump out and nothing's going to happen. You're going to need to move the skid steer until it can lift it. What bends these tails is by placing too much weight on here, loading it too heavy. Maybe you're uh, using the forklift, you're side loading, um, or maybe you had a machine and you lifted the tail and then you drove it back for some extra deck space or whatever the case was, but you loaded the tail too heavy and then driving down the road, the road shocks, the constant road shocks, bridges and potholes and so on, that is what will bend the tail. 
With today's compact construction equipment, equipment is commonly mounted on tracks. We have tracked skid steers, tracked mini excavators, and so on. With a tracked machine, it can present a challenge when you're loading it onto a trailer. Whether you have a hydraulic dovetail or if you have flip-over ramps, as you come up the angle of the tail or the ramps, the breakover point onto the deck of the trailer, that moment, that action of the machine pivoting over and breaking over, as we say, can induce quite a bit of stress on the trailer, on the frame and on the deck and so on. You can eliminate that actually with a hydraulic dovetail. You can do so by loading your machine onto the tail, getting it close to the breakover point so that most of the weight is here on the hinge point and not back on the tail. And then with a wireless remote with you on the machine, you can function the tail to bring it up to level and then drive forward, thereby completely eliminating that breakover pivot point when loading. So I hope that's been a helpful look at hydraulic dovetail trailers. If you have any other questions or want to have a conversation with us, we'd love to talk with you. Give us a call at Penner Trailer Sales, 931-361-1122.